Welcome to Talking Straight. I'm Suresh Kochar. COVID has changed everything, not just many lives, but the fate of many countries. India being one of those countries. Although India was registering good growth every year before the COVID, the introduction of policies like the PLI and several other reforms have increased the pace of the country's growth. India's growth is seeing an unprecedented change post-COVID. We have crossed England to become the fifth largest economy. Indian banks have recorded the highest profit in a quarter. The country's forex reserves have registered fastest growth in 14 months. Now, a chief Asian economist at Morgan Stanley wrote an article in the Financial Times predicting India's position in 2027. The economist wrote that India will become the third largest economy by 2027. The country's market capitalization, which is currently at 3.4 trillion, will rise to 11 trillion by 2032, it says. It praised the change for India's domestic policy for focusing on job creation and boosting investment. What does that mean? This means that India is becoming a force to reckon with, a country on a path to reclaim its glory. While countries like America and China are on the verge of recession, or maybe in it already, Depending on how you ask and whom you ask, Europe is battling its worst fight, which is the energy crisis. Russia's position is not very bright because of the sanction imposed on it due to the special operation against Ukraine. This is the position of influential countries. Compare it with India. You can clearly see that India is showing an impressive performance in terms of growth compared to other countries. This is not going well with many countries. Who are they? Many. They don't like India becoming stronger and independent because it reduces their clout in the country. A stronger India can take bold decisions. Take the Russian oil for example. Despite the pressure from the West, India did not bend their will. It increased the purchase of Russian oil and now Russia is the biggest oil supplier to India. Now imagine if India was not this strong. Would it have withstood the Western pressure? Certainly not. Take Trump's era, for instance. When President Trump imposed sanctions on Iranian oil, India was forced to look for alternatives. Why? Because India knew that it could not go against the American sanction. These two situations can explain how a stronger and independent India will take decisions. Since this is not good for many countries, which is the Britain, for our, we are allies in front of the camera, they are trying to create several obstacles by way in which they can. Let's take America for example. Don't believe in all these handshakes, loves and hugs. They are theatrics. Reality is always different. Take a few recent instances to prove that India-America relationship. In the name of fighting terrorism, America has granted 450 million package to Pakistan. That is $450 million. Everyone knows how Pakistan will use it. Despite knowing it, America went forward with the package. Last month, the US envoy to Pakistan visited the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, that is Jammu and Kashmir. Not only did visit the place, but also tweeted it Azad Kashmir, as Pakistan calls it. Of course, India raised objections to it, but we all know that it won't show any impact. While this is the case of the US envoy to Pakistan, it hasn't appointed one to India for a long time. An envoy plays a very crucial role in strengthening the relationship between two countries. Pakistan has won from the US and India doesn't. This clearly explains it's how coup is close to America. It doesn't end there. India's human rights record will be evaluated by the United Nations Human Rights Council. This is the fourth time India's human rights records will be evaluated by the UNHRC. Of course, it's not just India, whose human rights record will be evaluated. There are 13 more countries like Bahrain, Ecuador, Tunisia, Morocco, Indonesia, Finland, United Kingdom, Algeria, Philippines, Brazil, Poland, Netherlands, and South Africa, whose human rights record will be evaluated. It's a process where members of the UNHCR will evaluate the human rights record of the member countries. It's called the Universal Periodic Review. It is not just these countries whose human records will be evaluated. Other member countries may also be evaluated in the future. Now, who will be evaluating these countries' records, that's the human rights records? 
The countries which have membership for the Human Rights Council, just to name a few, are China, Qatar, UAE and United States. They are all a part of this council. Yes, the same China which is denying the basic rights to its citizens imposed on the draconian zero COVID lockdown in many parts of the country. Of course, there is no need to mention how it treats the Uyghur Muslims and the Tibetans. Coming to Qatar, it's hosting the FIFA World Cup. To host a tournament, it has built magnificent stadiums. They are fantastic. Of course, but Qatar committed several human rights violations in building this infrastructure. Time magazine said thousands of workers died during the construction of these stadiums due to extreme heat. Women have no rights and are dependent on men in Qatar. There are many to who point out the human rights abuses by the Qatari government. As for UAE, the country is currently on the FATF grey list. Why? Because it is involved in money laundering. Since UAE is an Islamic nation, one can easily understand that there is no place for human rights in that country. Now let's talk about the protector of democracy, the United States of America. See, if hypocrisy has a face, it's the United States of America. The country cannot stop the mass shootings in its own country, but it preaches about human rights to the entire world. It speaks about minority rights and maintains a close relationship with Pakistan and Qatar. Isn't this hypocrisy? Now these countries will be evaluating India's human rights record. This is a vicious campaign that several countries are running against India. These countries always spread false propaganda that India is seeing a rise in majoritarianism. Muslims and Christians are under threat and what not. Several world nations don't want India to grow. In order to stop India's growth, they use our human rights as one of their weapons. See Arab nations. OIC often brings up Muslim human rights in India and Jammu and Kashmir, but stays mum on China's atrocities against Uyghur Muslims. America and European nations preach to India about human rights and freedom of expression whenever they get a chance to undermine India. Canada fueled India's farmer protest, but crushed the striker strike in their country by imposing an emergency. Germany blamed India for arresting Mohammed Zubair, but the same Germany arrested an independent journalist, Alina Lip, when she went against the Western propaganda on the Russian-Ukraine war. She was sentenced to three years in prison without trial. What does this say? It says that these countries are using human rights as a tool to put pressure on India. By evaluating human rights in India and bringing up similar kind of issues, they are trying to project India as some kind of authoritarian nation that hurt its growth prospects. But when are they forgetting that they will point one finger at India, there are three fingers that are pointing towards them. That is the most important thing to remember. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos and don't forget to like and share this video. Nationalist Hub, it's a news revolution.